to check in with the group. Thank you for inviting me out here. I'm having a great time so far. Are you getting something out of the comments? Getting some nuggets? Good, good, good. Some little gold nuggets. I call them pennies from heaven. When they draw from heaven, there's just little pennies of heaven. You go, wow, thank you for that gift of inspiration or insight. So thank you for being here. But I want to check in with the gang. We've had a big day. We've had a fantastic meal. We've got a fantastic facility. A great place to do the good work of talking about the disease that we share in common or, or, care, or care partner for that disease. I want to check in with them. You want to check in? Sure. Ready? Sure. One, two, three. If you're sure. happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We're doing good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thanks for, thanks for having me again. It's such a delight to be here. I flew yesterday from a little place called Nova Scotia. Anybody been to Nova Scotia? Yay! It's here for the East Coast. It's here for Admari Uskad Admari from C to C. So I want to share with you uh, the, 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 the day that I did not clap very loud for myself. It was October the 10th, 2005. October the 10th, 2005 was the first time I ever met a guy called a neurologist. And in July of that year, I went to my family doctor because I had some odd symptoms in July of 2005. The last couple of months, I was having a hard time handwriting, having a hard time uh, brushing my teeth. I thought to myself, that's odd. So I went to my doctor and I said, Doc, I'm having a hard time handwriting and having a hard time brushing my teeth. And he told me, he said to me, he said, that's <laughs> odd. He asked me to walk, he asked me to shake hands, and he looked at me and said, you know what? You got something that's odd. <laughs> it's one of two things. It's a choice. Have you had the choice given to you before? It's either Parkinson's disease or a brain tumor. Yay! <laughs> well, that's good to know. I have a choice. It's always good to be in power in life. It's fine. I haven't had a lot of power in life. I have a choice. So, January 2006, I got an MRI which I don't like because it's really cramped cores, it drives me nuts. And I had a nice clean brain, except for the substantia nigra, which of course was falling apart on me, which of course is Parkinson's disease. So January 12th, of, uh, January of uh, 06. I spent the year from July to the next uh, October not telling anybody. I was 45 years old. I've climbed mountains in six continents. I've run marathons. I'm a very happy, lucky, go friendly, I'll climb them up, physically active kind of feller. And I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. And I said to myself, and apologies to the folks with gray hair in the room, I said, I can't be having this. This is an old person's disease. You know, you, you know who I'm talking about. So I, I, was, I, I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. I didn't tell anybody. I actually told myself. This is how I talked to myself. I said, by the time I gather up some symptoms, my mother will probably have passed away, and I wouldn't have to put her through the worry. So I said to myself, I said, by the time I, so I'm not going to tell my mom. I'm not going to tell my dad. So for about a year, I had a few checklists on the old list from what we just, well, from, from what we just had there, a few of the old depression checklists, the feeling, feeling sad for myself checklist, until October of 2006. And I'll tell you about that story when I come back to it again during our talk. So what I'd like to do with you, to beg your indulgence, is to share with you four dimensions of living well with Parkinson's. I've been at it for five years now. I'm, I'm a motivational speaker. I travel the world talking to folks about um, life and motivation in general, but with the added bonus of being a Parkinson's specialist, because I'm a specialist now. We're all specialists in this room. We're some, you know, I'm a specialist. Um, then I have that other, other layer. So it's been my delight to be able to travel to different Parkinson's associations and share a bit of a message from as a motivational speaker, but also as a person living with and thriving with Parkinson's disease. Oh, you meant striving. No, no, I meant thriving. I didn't mean striving, I meant thriving. I want to share with you how to live well in my short lifespan of 50 years, how to live well with this disease, and also the message, of course, is for the caregivers as well, the care partners out there, because they are our unsung heroes. So, big your indulgence, I'd like to share with you four dimensions of energies, four dimensions of living well, four places of ways that we can look for the source of juice for our lives. Would you be interested in that? If so, please say yay. Yay! Can I hear hallelujah? <laughs> just seems right in here, doesn't it? <laughs> just seems right. Just seems right. Now here's 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 the here's the quote that I want to share with you. It's a Robert Frost quote. It's, it's a true or false. It isn't the mountain ahead of you that wears you out. It's the grain of sand in your shoe. True or false? Yes, it's the little things, eh? Those little things that get up and gather us, up, gather us all up, and then drive us nuts over the course of time. We can handle the big stuff. Some of you have lost your jobs. Some of you might have been divorced. Some of you have had a diagnosis. That you can handle that stuff. It's those little things that sort of pick away at you that that cause you stress and distress. So I want to share with you 
some thoughts and ideas around how to manage these four different areas of our lives. But I want to give you a little test. You know, the, the, the doctors were good about testing and the, sort of the, the, the background testing stuff. And I want to share with you a little test that I've discovered around our levels of stress. You know, when you get stressed out, you produce cortisol. We were talking a lot about brain chemistry, right? You know that the brain's a pharmacy. The brain produces or doesn't produce enough dopamine. It produces or doesn't produce enough cortisol or endorphins or serotonin or whatever. And when you have the different fluctuations, you can, it can affect your body. It can affect you physically. So I want to give you a little test. They say if you're stressed out, it, it can affect your, t t it can tighten up your body, it can tighten up your muscles and tighten up, it actually affects your eyes, you can actually see things. So they, they did a study with London College Hospital and uh, discovered that if you're stressed out, you, you actually start, you, your, your eyes warp a little bit. So what I have on the screen here is two dolphins. I'll step back so you can see it. I have two dolphins and they're jumping out of the water exactly at the same time. And if you can see, there's no difference, they're the same dolphins, right? But if you can see two differences between the dolphins, you're, mo you're moderately stressed out. If you see three differences, you're, you're maximum stressed out, so you'll have to stay here for another week. Just to, <laughs> to, just, just, just take care. So I'm not going to do a show of hands, I'll just show it to you. So here it is. How you doing? How you doing so far? <laughs> you okay? You should be pretty calm. You've had a nice day to calm, but you should be pretty not too stressed out. So. so that that's a good stress test for your body, because it's really important to get in touch with your physical body. Now, if it, was so, if it was so easy to get in touch with our bodies, we, 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 we would be able to do it in, in a good way. But unfortunately, the, the glowworm has it mastered. Um, because it's hard, to, it's hard to catch stuff when we're getting stressed out physically. So I want to share with you this little, little sense. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quote. It's actually a song. I wish I was a glowworm, my glowworm's never glum. Because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines at your bum? <laughs> Now, the next time you see Katrina, you say, Katrina, you're glowing, girl. You must have a good weekend. So she knows she's doing okay. If it was only so easy. We have to be really in touch with our bodies to understand that. So I have a little question for you. Would you be so kind as to pair up with somebody, someone that you like, hopefully? If you have three people, that's okay. I'd like you to share the following question. What's your favorite body part and why? <laughs> oh, on your body. <laughs> on you. Now, there's a temptation to say the brain, so go ahead, but, but beyond the brain, two minutes to discuss, have a little chat, then we'll have Vanna come around and, and see what you got to say. What's your favorite body part and why on you? Favorite body part, go ahead, have a chat. Okay, and Ding, anybody want to share their favorite body part and why it's their favorite body part? Hands up, Vanna will come and help you out. Here, here she is, right there in the front row. Courageous old woman. Is, 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 is that on? Do a little clip. Sorry. <laughs> I hear because of the sound I hear. Now, what do you love to hear? I love all oh, beautiful words. Ah. Music? You like music? Music, songs, kind words. Kind words, beautiful. So let's hear for the years. Eh? That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. We've got time for a couple more body parts. What's your, what are some other body parts? Hands up high. Go ahead, over the middle there. I don't think I'll need the mic. My husband and I both discussed it. We've been together 52 years. Uh -oh. It's both of our eyes. <laughs> because I like to smock and make beautiful little dresses for little girls. And my husband. Photography. So you like to smock for little girls, which are beautiful in their own right, because I have a little girl. And you like, to, you like photography, so the celebration of the eyes. You know, they say the eyes are the window to the soul. It's beautiful to celebrate your eyes and all those body parts. Well, there are 2,000 body parts, and we have time for one more. <laughs> There's one in the front row. So, I mean, oh, they got it up first. We'll come back to you. We both like our hands, because of what they can do with, like, doing scrapbooking and you know, working on the computer and part of the city. Hands. It's good with hands. Hands, beautiful. Love the hands. And this poor lady had a hand up and you wanted me to buy her to grab her. Bring the front row there. I like my mouse because of my smile. People tell me to keep smiling. Let's hear it. Keep smiling. Okay. 